We're going to do so by digging in between our teeth and applying a half drop of something called Congo Red. So I'm going to go ahead. How do I get a half a drop, first of all? If you recall, I said a whole drop last time we got some dye when we did the methylene blue was we, um, we let gravity do the job of pulling a whole drop of dye out of the dropper. In this case, we're going to actually take the dropper and touch it down, physically touch it to wick off a half of a drop on the, the far end of the slide. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Okay, I just got a little half drop of Congo Red. Oops, Congo Red. And now what I'm going to do is um, use this wooden, sterile wooden uh, swab as a toothpick. I have not been able to find the toothpicks, but I promise this will do the job as well. So here I am uh, digging between where my teeth meet, up the gum line. Not the most pleasant thing. It's like flossing your teeth. I mean, but you got to do it. You know, I'm gonna get the bacteria. I probably got a little lunch out of there too. <laughs> Who knows? Okay. Now I'm gonna go ahead and um, and show a close up of how I mix this in and how I follow the rest of the steps to the negative state, to making a negative state. Okay. So we'll switch over to the document camera. Let's get a good close-up of that. So you can see that I have it labeled negative stain. I put my half a drop of Congo Red. It looks like more than half a drop, but it's, I think it'll be the right amount. And what I'm gonna be using um, is my toothpick, or in this case, a sterile end of a wooden stick on a swab and stir that in. Again, we want to do a good job stirring because we don't want the bacteria to be heaped into one place. I'm going to take the um, a second slide and use it um, to make a smear. That's how a negative stain is made is by um, taking this second slide. Now notice the second slide carefully. It actually has cut corners. If you look at what's, at what's present here, right at the corner edge, you can see that there's a cut off corner. And it's on both sides. And those cut off corners, called the bevel edge, is a special slide that will make it so that the dye doesn't spread all the way to the edges. Um, if you're using if you're using this on clinical specimens, you don't want those bacteria at the edges where your fingers are going to handle the slide. Um, so use a bevel edge slide, and you set the bevel edge down in front of the drop of dye, and you back it back up into the dye so that the stain will spread across the bottom edge of the bevel edge slide, and then you reverse it right across as you feather it across to make a smear. Now, I was a little shaky and I did get some towards the bottom edge of the slide here. But we're gonna let this air dry and they're harmless oral bacteria, so I'm gonna just say that this is gonna be usable. All right, now the bevel edge slide, I'm just gonna put into the biohazard area uh, to get rid of it, basically. Uh, we would treat any slides from clinical specimens as not something we just throw in the trash, but something that we would put into the autoclave pile um, biohazard container so that eventually it would get uh, destroyed without there being any potential infectious material. All right, as we take in a zoomed in close look, I have my negative stain. Now, since I'm actually gonna use this for my capsule stain, one of the things I can do is remove this label or you know just put some alcohol on there and I can take that label off of there or I can modify it to show that it's also you know to label it as a capsule stain. So I've got a fully air dried negative stain and if you recall I used Congo Red and that's what you would use for the first part first step of this capsule stain 
and now that's fully dry on the slide and the next step in the capsule stain after air drying that without the use of heat um, is to use 0.1 normal HCl basically this is a hydrochloric acid solution that's strong enough to kill the bacteria um, and also to fix them to the slide so that they don't just rehydrate and wash off. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and flood the whole slide with hydrochloric acid. And so you wanna make sure that you get all the bacteria so they're all dead and that it fully covers the slide so that it changes its color as well. You'll actually see that because of the dramatic pH change that hydrochloric acid produces as it reduces the pH to almost one, that the Congo red turns into a midnight blue. Now I'm gonna look at the clock and make sure that that's gonna sit on there for about 30 seconds. You wanna give the hydrochloric acid enough time to act, but not so much time that it completely washes away your dried negative stain. So I'm waiting the full 30 seconds and during that time I'm going to use a clothespin or whatever other device you can use for um, a slide clip. I don't want to get the hydrochloric acid on my fingers that would burn my skin. I don't want to see anyone burn their skin or their hands. If you did get this on your skin you could just wash it off right away. Um, it's not a super strong solution but I'm going to go ahead and dump off the hydrochloric acid and try to shake off any excess. Now you can see that the hydrochloric acid did take up some of the dye and it looks kind of spotty or patchy now and we're not going to be able to rinse that. If you rinse that what happens is, is it can wash off even more. Um, so this is really delicate staining process but it did turn out well so far. We're going to follow up with this last step of an application of a red dye called safranin. You would not want to mix up the two red dyes. Congo red is always the first step when you perform the negative stain um, first step and then you put that aside you want to make sure you grab this second type of red dye it's a kind of a little bit different shade of red kind of a light reddish pink and what we're going to do is flood the entire smear be generous with these chemicals guys you don't want to um, you don't want to hold off and put too little so you cover the whole smear and then you know what time it is on the clock. We need to let that soak for one minute. And I'll explain what these chemicals, uh, what they accomplished in detail in just a moment after the close-up view. So we're, while we're waiting for that one minute, uh, you have to have your slide clip ready to go. We wanna be careful about the timing and not leave these chemicals on for too long. And we can, um, we can get ready to rinse. We're gonna do a light rinse, and the amount of water that you're using, because this is really delicate, uh, it's gonna be just the softest stream of water that you can provide so that you can get the safranin off of there and, um, and then you can blot dry your slide. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead, it's been approximately one minute. Um, I'm gonna dump off the excess safranin and then give it just a very gentle rinse. And notice the way that I rinse. I'm rinsing with the slide at an angle and I'm using my slide clip so I don't get these chemicals on my fingers. And that's it. So now I'll show you the blotting technique. You can use a paper towel or a Kim wipe. Uh, I've got a Kim wipe here, which is like a delicate little towelette. And then what I'm gonna do is just wipe the bottom. It's okay to wipe the bottom of the slide because the bottom has no, uh, nothing on it. It's just bare glass. The top, you wouldn't wanna wipe because then you'll damage the smear. So what I'm gonna do is take my Kim wipe and just press it down gently and blot it. Maybe I'll do that one more time and that's about as much as I wanna do. Any little bit of leftover moisture is not a problem. Uh, this can go under the microscope no cover slip. You can just go straight to viewing and you can put oil on there and everything. No, uh, no problem at all. So that's the capsule stain now completed. All right, so looking back at the steps, 
we want to take note of a couple of important points taking into consideration what the chemicals actually do. So the first chemical was Congo Red, which we know allows us to make the negative stain technique. And then after letting it air dry so as not to use any heat, let's think about that. Capsules are actually heat sensitive. So if you were to use some sort of a heating mechanism like a slide warmer or a flame, it would shrink these capsules and effectively it would make for a bad capsule stain. It might ruin the capsules. So we don't use heat. We have to be patient about the air drying. The next thing we have is the hydrochloric acid. And so I'll underline this. I've already typed it in. Hydrochloric acid kills the bacteria and coagulates the proteins. And so protein coagulation is the way in which they die. And killing the bacteria is important because you want to make sure that those bacteria, uh, especially if they were pathogens, like in a clinical sample, that they're not alive anymore. Um, and, uh, and so that's an important, you know, that, that's something that we have to have ways of making our samples safe and understanding also that what this does is it the hydrochloric acid sticks the bacteria to the slide. When the proteins coagulate, it also causes them to fix down onto the slide. Now, the last step was the safranate, which was um, a one minute procedure followed by a gentle rinse. So the safranate has a different function than the Congo red, because even though safranate is a reddish pink dye, it's going in directly to the bacterial cells. Recall that on the negative stain, the whole background is colored, but the cells are clear. But in this case, we see that the capsule stain, the cells are not clear. You can see the little bacterial cells inside of each and every one of the capsules, and that's because the safranin goes in and actually gets absorbed by the cells. And if you review back through your notes so far, um, the negative stain has a negative charge and it's repelled by the bacterial cells, so it stains the background but not the cells. Safranin, on the other hand, is one of the simple stains, one of the basic alkaline dyes. And if you recall, that has the opposite charge. It has a positive charge. And so the negatively charged bacterial cells will absorb the positively charged safranin, and then you'll have this contrast between uh, the stained background and the stained bacterial cells and then the unstained capsule. And you might be left wondering, well, how does the capsule not take on the stain? And apparently, capsular structures, which are made of these mucoid polysaccharide or mucoid polypeptides, uh, they lack a charge. And without a charge, then the negative or negatively or positively charged dyes don't really interact with the capsule. Okay. So now it's time to pause um, one more time and we're going to look at a capsule stain result through the microscope. And remember, we're looking for something that's going to look similar to what we see in the picture here. Okay, now we're looking through the microscope lens at low power. And I have the camera positioned here. I'm going to go ahead and use a little fine focusing to try to get them in sharp focus under low power. And what I want you to pay attention to under low power is not so much that you can see the bacteria, uh, but the color. So on the left, we see that there's this dark bluish, purplish color. And that's from the pH change when I was describing that the hydrochloric acid would cause the Congo red to sometimes turn like a dark blue or almost midnight type color. But then we can also see parts of the, of the smear here that are still the red color of Congo red. And it really depends on what part of the smear is either thick or thin and how much pH change happened from the hydrochloric acid. Regardless, it doesn't really matter when it comes to seeing capsules. So don't be confused if you see either red or, um, or kind of a blue color. 
because either background color will work to give us that contrast and then the bacterial cells when we take a closer look are still going to have the reddish pink color from the safranin. So what I'm doing is putting just a little bit of oil. I know you can't see anything right now guys but I'm putting a little bit of oil and I'm going to carefully switch to the oil lens magnification and do a little fine focusing and there we are you can see all the tiny little bacterial cells this is a slide that was labeled Klebsiel and ammonia and you can see that all the little clear spots are where the bacteria have capsules around them um, and then inside of those little clear spots it's maybe a little hard to zoom I'm going to try to zoom in we can see by zooming in that there are bacteria that are colored with the safranin and that's about as good of a close of a look as we're going to get on on the camera through the microscope